talk about from a really high level what information is in available in this view. So first of all, we've got query ID, query start time, and username. And we've got the details over here. So for every event, every query, anything that's been accessed in Snowflake, we're going to have in the access history view, we're gonna be able to see what the query ID was that was run, what was the start time of that query, what was the username of that query. So we could go through and easily be able to see, show me all of the queries that were run by a specific user. Show me all the queries that Rich ran, I want to see what he's looking at and where he's going. And, and uh, then in addition to those, we've got some, as I mentioned, some variant objects, some JSON structures. One of those is directly name, uh, named objects. We'll talk about that more in detail. Then we've got base objects sourced. We've got modified for modified objects and we've got governed policies reference. Directly named objects is just that it's objects that in our sql we directly name these objects so if you look at uh, my sample <clears throat> query here simple little query select star from cust underscore ord which uh, not recommended by the way but uh, but that's okay <laughs> just just an example uh don't need any messages about why are you using select star and um and i think i said that these were variant their arrays so semi-structured data apologies um all right, so we've got this select star from cust underscore ord. And if we want to go in and look at access history and look at this query, we're going to see that cust underscore ord is a view. If we look at directly named objects, the direct objects accessed, what we're going to see here is what were the objects that we actually accessed. So we would see, and there, and we'll look at the details of that, we would see the view cust ord. We would see that that was accessed, and we would see that all of the columns from there were returned to us. If we look at the base object source, which is another array that's got all a bunch of information in there, what that does is that actually tells us, you know, I know you went and looked at the cust ord view, but that is a view layer that's on top of, in this case, another view. As you can see here, we've got a shipped view, and then we've got three tables. The base object source goes after just that, the base objects. And so if we ran this exact same query for this record in access history, we would see that we accessed this view in our SQL. If we looked at the base objects access, we would see that we access the products table, the orders table, and the customers table because it's showing us the lowest level base objects. So we would, in the direct objects accessed and the base objects accessed, we would never see this shipped view. It's it's like it, it didn't even exist um, because it, we're, not, we're not gonna see the whole path of where it went. We only see the, the details of the base objects or whatever we directly uh, we directly named. So, so that's those two. Again, we're gonna dive into the details of this. Modified, the modified is an array that will show us information about any um, objects that were associated with a write operation in the query. And remember, a write operation would be an insert, an update, uh, any of those type of things, right? So if anything changes, we created a new table, um, we we updated some rows in a table, those are, we're gonna see information in the modified section. And then in the governed policies reference, if we queried or if our our event that we are looking at accessed any um, data, any columns where there's a masking policy on the column or a row access policy on the table or 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 um, policies that are set on any of the intermediate columns. If we had a policy that was set on a view, uh, we would see that in the policies referenced and we'll show you the details in here. Um, if we look at the objects in the JSON access history, the things that we're going to see when we access them our tables, views, external tables, functions, materialized views, procedures, stages, and streams. Any of those right now is what's in the event history. They may put more in there as they move forward. Like I said, this has been evolving over time, becoming better and better and even more useful. Um, so a number of things there. One important thing to point out is that the access history view, this is a Snowflake account usage view, for those of you that have spent any time looking at the metadata in Snowflake, we know that there is latency on the views that are in the Snowflake um, account usage schema. 
Um, and the, for this particular, for the access history view, the latency is up to three hours. We've noticed that uh, usually uh, the information is available much sooner than that, but you could be up to three hours. And so this isn't something, when we talk about, you know, how are we going to use this and, and what are we going to use this for? This isn't something that we are going to use to find out in near real time if somebody's accessing a column or something like that, right? There, there's other things, other ways that we would do that. We wouldn't use this for that because of that latency. Um, and so just a little diagram up here to show you Snowflake database account usage schema, and here's the view. Hey folks, thanks for checking out this cut from our broadcast. To see the full show, click on the link in the video description. Also check out our learning center, which has white papers, events, live streams, and short explainer videos on a wide range of data management topics. And of course, if you like our content, please share it on LinkedIn. That really means a lot to us. Thanks again for checking us out, and we hope to see you in our next broadcast.